Let's move on now to a 401k fix. Despite the optimism surrounding the past week's 14% rally in the S&P 500, some investors, as Joe had said, are not trusting this move. One look at the following will explain why. In fact, we have had no less than five bear market bounces of 10% or more over the past year. So is this move for real or is this just another head, head fake? Doug Cliggett, excuse me, chief investment officer at Dover Management tells us why he thinks we still have further to fall. And you're actually a buyer. We had Jeff DeGraff on from ISI yesterday, technical analyst who said, as we had pointed out, 46 days is the average for a bear market bounce. And you, you actually buy that, but for the longer term investor, it's dangerous. I don't know how you argue with uh, all the <laughs> facts that Jeff put together. I, I mean, they are overwhelming for a short term rally. I guess the reason we're skeptical and think that unfortunately this one too will fail is usually for the long haul you want to buy stocks when they're cheap. Um, if you look at prices today versus earnings, believe it or not, the S&P 500 is still pretty expensive. And that's because profit margins and earnings are in a kind of free fall we have never seen before. Uh, reported net income of the S&P 500 in the fourth quarter it was a negative $20. We've never printed a negative number before, and it was negative $20. How focused is that on the financials in terms of just these unprecedented it's, enormous losses they're taking it, on? And it, it's, it's big, Jeff. You're absolutely right. So if you look at operating earnings, which has much less balance sheet adjustment in it, that was down 56 cents. Uh, again, we've never printed a negative number before. But, okay, forget reported net income. Look at operating earnings, $49 is the number for last year. So where are we now? Something like 15, 16 times that number. That's about the midpoint of history. It's hard to make money being a long-term buyer at the midpoint. I mean, at the end of the day, stocks are like anything else. You really want to buy them when they're cheap. Um, you might have a trade now, but we don't think this is a time to really make a big move into equities. So what will be the signal for you to say for long-term investors, particularly people who are looking at their 401k portfolios and are just wringing right. their hands, what's a signal to buy? Okay, we brought an illustration along. I don't know if we can see it. It's the profit share of U.S. national income. Mm -hmm. Think of the U.S. economy as a pie. It's divided into wages and salaries and profits. Uh, you can see it's very cyclical. We're on our way down now. If we look back at the last five, six, seven cycles since 1955, this is, the market has never done better when that was falling. And here, this shows credit growth against corporate profits. That's the next slide. Credit growth leads profit margins by six months. So in our sequence, we want to see credit growth bottom, margins will then bottom, and then we think we'll have a firm bottom in the stock market. Will the market, though, anticipate the moves? In other words, will the market move before we see that turn in those charts? Never has. Never has. Never has. So you can sit there and wait and watch for that turn well, in those charts. Let's be careful. Right. We have seven data points, so, okay? It, this eighth time might be different. But again, the logic is, and it, when you're trading stocks, how often do you make money buying a stock when its margins are really under pressure? Margins will turn before the profit numbers will turn, but whether it's semiconductors, no matter what business you're in, if your profit margins are getting crushed, which this shows corporate America's profit margins are getting crushed, you almost never make money stepping in ahead of the I'll ask one question. The fact yeah, that please. operating margins seem to be improving for a lot of companies because they've been forced to be better operators of their companies. They've been forced to run things more efficiently. Does that factor into this at all? Well, if, if the operating margin starts to improve and then you get a revenue lift off, then you get a great net margin story. Uh, I think the problem we're confronting right now is that revenues are under pressure as well. Okay, Doug Cliggett, got to leave it there. Thanks so much for your time, Thank you, Doug Cliggett of Dover. Coming